my name is Kelsey Marie Muhammad, and I'm the founder of the Jokeland Agency, a social media and digital agency. Today, I'm speaking with Jessica Harumi, who is a content creator with a focus in sustainability. Today, we're going to be talking about conscious consumption in the world of content creation. And I'm really excited to hear more about your story, Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica Harumi, and I'm a blogger, content creator, and YouTuber working in sustainable fashion and slow living. Happy to be here. Thank you, Kelsey. So Jessica, why did you decide to create content in the sustainable niche? Yeah, so I started actually experimenting with capsule wardrobes in my free time, and I started sharing that process online. Um, just because I was looking for those types of resources online when I was getting started with it. And I wanted to sort of share my journey with that and, you know, started posting outfit pictures online and getting more involved with like Instagram and meeting other content creators through that, which actually led me to start learning about sustainable fashion. And from there, it just kind of took off and I just really loved it and felt so connected to that community. And what are some of your favorite sustainable brands, even from when you started to now, new brands that you've recently discovered? Yeah, so one of my favorite sustainable brands from the very beginning is Organic Basics. And I love them because, you know, as the name suggests, they make high quality, like organic wardrobe basics, um, which I'm a big fan of. <laughs> And they have a lot of transparency around like their production process and the factories that they use. And they have a sort of like extensive impact report that they share with all of their customers. So you feel kind of involved with, you know, the strides that they're making with sustainability in their company. And they even have created this like low impact website, which is an idea that I've never heard of before and just learning about how polluting the internet actually is. It just seemed like such a kind of innovative and interesting idea to me. So I thought that was quite cool. And um, another one that I learned about more recently is called Sheep Included. And they're actually a carbon negative knitwear brand. So their production processes are actually saving and storing more carbon than they produce, which is really incredible. And they follow like some of the highest like animal welfare standards in the world. And I just love how thoughtful their entire brand and processes. And of course, they make really beautiful knitwear too. Um, I need to check out those brands. Um, I've never heard of them, but I'm curious to know how has sustainability impacted your YouTube creation process? Yeah, so, you know, I think it's allowed me to create content that brings more value to people, you know, when I'm not focusing so much on what someone needs to buy or you know, like the latest, newest trends that people need to follow and I'm not telling people and just encouraging overconsumption all the time, then I'm able to focus on like, this is how you style yourself. This is how you appreciate the clothing you already have. And this is how you downsize and, you know, how to hone in on your personal style. And I think that is what people are really looking for when they're consuming content around fashion. You know, they want to be inspired. And I think that following designers and things can really, you know, bring so much inspiration to people but then day to day when they're getting dressed I think a lot of people are just looking for like practical advice on how to just appreciate what they have and get more use out of it and just feel more comfortable in their personal style. So you inspire others through your sustainable fashion content but where do you find inspiration to create these videos? Um hmm well, I try to share things that I'm just interested in from like a personal perspective. Um, so like my desire to start downsizing a lot really came from my experiences traveling and just wanting to like move around more freely and own fewer things. And when I started sharing that sort of personal journey with other people, I realized that so many other people are looking to do the same thing. And maybe they just didn't really know how to go about it or they don't have like people around them or in their community that really support that kind of journey to downsizing or to minimalism. Um, so, you know, a lot of it just comes from like my personal experiences with how I get dressed every day and how I want to go about, you know, living my life really when it comes to minimalism and sustainability. Um, and then more aesthetically, 
Um, I feel very inspired by like minimalism um, and also menswear because I think that there's kind of this like classic timeless element to menswear that is just really inspiring to me and something that I try to incorporate in different ways into my own style. And for people who are interested in fashion and love shopping and want to live a more sustainable life, um, what are some easy ways or some tips to ease into sustainability? Yeah, so, you know, I think it comes from first just the desire to wanting to do better. So really understanding that desire and and what drives you to make these types of changes in your life. It's important to take time to understand that because you want these changes to be long lasting and, you know, sustainable in your own life and you want them to make sense to you going forward. So really starting with a firm understanding of like why this is important to you is very important. It's very, (laughs) you know, an important part of that, I think. Um, And then, you know, investing in your wardrobe long term and doing research into brands so that you know what you're supporting really with your dollars Um, and also taking steps to like shop secondhand first when you can. If you're looking for things, you know, there's so many secondhand options online now. And, you know, for content creators, I think getting away from some of these trendy sort of topics around like doing massive clothing hauls and you know, like just following trends really closely is, I think, an important way to start incorporating a more sustainable approach to fashion because, you know, a majority of people really don't shop that way and don't really, I think, want to consume fashion in this way that's really um, kind of just wasteful, you know. So I think if we get away from these trends of doing this and and make it just normal to like you know, normalize, like wearing your clothing, wearing what you have, you know, wearing things over again and just getting a lot of use out of them is just a really important step to take towards creating more sustainable content. Um, Yeah. And then I would say just being really honest about sharing your sustainability journey is what's going to make most authentic and what's going to connect most with people because, you know, we need a we need a lot of people doing sustainability in an imperfect way rather than a few people doing it perfectly. And I think that people get so much more value out of seeing, you know, the highs and lows of it and, you know, really trying to incorporate some of these ideas into your daily life in a way that is realistic for each person. Mm -hmm. And as social media goes into prioritizing video content, how important is it to talk about sustainability in the digital world? What does that mean to you? And why do you want to encourage others to be more sustainable with their practice? Yeah, you know, I think it's just, it's incredibly important because it's kind of reflective of I think what people really want or the direction that we're moving in sort of collectively. Um, And I think that, you know, the traction that sustainability has started to gain online is where we're really seeing brands starting to respond to that call to be more sustainable, to be more, you know, transparent in their production. And, you know, I think that the digital space is really starting to influence the fashion industry in this really positive way where, um, you know, before there was this pressure for brands to have an online presence to sort of stay relevant. And now I think there's a similar pressure for brands to be more transparent, be more size inclusive, um, be more diverse and more sustainable too. And that's in direct response to this beautiful, like sustainability community that has started to flourish online. Mm -hmm. And when you're collaborating with brands or taking on partnerships, what do you look for um, to stay true to your content and to also help these brands to drive their mission to your followers? Yeah, I I always <laughs> uh, try to be honest with myself when partnering with brands. Like, is this something, is this a brand that I would support if it weren't through work? You know, is this really something I see myself getting a lot of use out of? And is it something that I see other people would really connect with and appreciate and yeah there's just a desire in me to have partnerships with brands where our values are aligned and I think that's true for anyone who's deciding whether they want to support a brand with their money you know is that 
I feel like consumers are really looking for these values that brands are starting to represent or are, you know, showing through the actions that they take in just the way that they present themselves. And um, yeah, just like really like putting your putting your dollar behind values that you care about is important for me. And, you know, I just always want any kind of collaboration that I do with a brand to feel really organic and to make sense. And part of that also comes from the brand having trusted me to be able to create content that I would, that I feel, you know, really aligns with what I care about. Mm -hmm. And Jessica, the content creation industry is not going anywhere soon, anywhere. Like it's only going to expand. There's only going to be more content creators. There's going to be more brands. So where do you think the future of the digital creation space is going? And what are your hopes for the future? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's so true. And I guess my hope is that creators are able to continue to influence the industry in a positive way. Um, I think that we often forget how much power we have as consumers to really show brands like what we care about, what we're willing to support. And content creators are so connected to these brands in, you know, such a like personal way. I think sometimes we feel as consumers kind of disconnected from brands or like we're just, you know, this is what we have to choose from. And content creators have this really interesting relationship in the industry where they can really enact positive change and be, you know, kind of a, they can really sort of put forward the the desires and what the consumers are looking for and kind of amplify that and hopefully be able to support those more positive changes. And last question, this is more of a fun question for the people watching. We are currently in spring going into summer. What are your three must-have items for spring, summer fashion? This is a difficult one. (laughs) Um, So for spring, I would say a trench coat because I love a trench coat and I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so it's quite cold and rainy here. So it's very necessary. And then summer, you know, I I used to not really enjoy dressing for summer because I find it kind of difficult. And now I just want to be like in a comfortable bathing suit all the time. Um, Yeah. So a stretchy, comfortable bathing suit that's also cute and sustainable and a great pair of sunglasses, too. So I feel like that just adds so much to every outfit. Yeah. Sunglasses really take an outfit from being like casual to just it gives it a little zhuzh. Yes, um, absolutely. <laughs> it was a pleasure talking to you, Jessica. Can you tell everyone where they can find you? Yeah, so you can find me on my website, um, jessicaharumi.com. I'm also on Instagram at jessica.harumi and over on YouTube as well. Jessica Harumi there too. <laughs> thank you, Jessica. Yeah, thank you, Kelsey.